Hey guys, Hamsubo here with a new video, and since Nostarius is coming back and everyone's making videos about it, I figured I might as well do the same, and that got me thinking. What kind of videos should I make? And after a bit of thinking, I figured I might as well do some class guides, so I can properly inform you about the classes in WoW Vanilla, so you can make an educated decision when it comes to making your character. And today we're starting off with one of my favorite classes of all time, the Druid. Let's first talk about what options you have when you're leveling. Starting off with Balance. Balance is not really that great when it comes to lower levels as you need some decent spell damage gear and some key talents that are deeper in the balance tree to make it work. The talents I'm talking about are 5 points in Vengeance, 5 points in Improved Starfire and Nature's Grace. From that point on Balance isn't actually half bad in terms of damage the only problem is the fact that it's a very mana expensive way of leveling. You'll have much more downtime compared to Feral Druids who don't have to drink mana every 2 or 3 mobs and something to keep in mind is that you're out there in the open. Unlike Feral Druids who will be using cat form and thus stealth. So as a balanced druid you're also more vulnerable to getting ganked. I advise you to start considering specking balance at level 35 because of those key talents and at that level it should be somewhat easy to get your hands on some gear with a bit of spell damage. Later in the game balance becomes better with a bit more mana regen and some extra damage buffs, but we'll talk about that later. Moving on to Feral, the preferred choice of leveling for druids, and there are several reasons why. First of all, they're much better at questing and killing mobs because they don't have to drink mana every 2 or 3 mobs like balanced druids. They sometimes have to get out of cat form to heal, but with decent gear you can stay in cat form long enough for your mana to replenish, which means barely any downtime for leveling. Also, talents such as Feral Charge and Thick Hide allow you to become a bit more beefy as a tank, as tanking as a druid is viable in both lower and higher level dungeons. Also, healing as a Feral Druid isn't too bad either. With some off healing gear you can do just fine in lower dungeons, and 5 points in Heart of the Wild will give you 20% extra intellect, which is a lot of mana in the later stages of the game. Another thing I need to mention is the fact that Pharaoh is much better at PvPing and questing in contested zones, as you will be using stealth a lot and that means the chance of you getting ganked, or the chance of you having the opener on another player, is much bigger. Trust me, being able to level while having stealth is a huge advantage. Especially if you're in a zone crawling with alliance like Strangled from Bale, and you like to do some PvP while leveling. Last but not least we have Restoration. If you want to focus on leveling by mostly doing dungeons, then Resto is a good choice. A solid healer is greatly appreciated, so having a lower level druid who's actually specced into Restoration is a welcoming sight in any lower level dungeon. At level 20 and up they can already start using useful talents such as Reflection, in subtlety and at level 30 they get nature swiftness which makes your next nature spell an instant cast perfect for those tricky situations when you need to throw out an emergency heal the only problem with going resto of course is that questing or leveling by yourself will be slow as you barely have any talents to boost your damage you can however just team up with someone quest together and be that guy's personal healer and now that we got that out of the way, it's time to talk about your options when you've reached level 60. So what is balance like endgame? Well, let's start off with PvP, because in PvP they're actually not too bad. Yeah, I'm not joking. Balanced Druids have always got a bad rap in WoW Vanilla, and let me tell you as an experienced Balanced Druid, they're nothing to be laughed at when played well. At early stages they might not be much to brag about, but get the right gear and they can become crit monsters, being able to dish out nasty crits with Starfire. If you hang back with the group in Battlegrounds and provide support in both CC and damage, you'll be a great addition to the team. And that's really the strength of Balanced Druids, the support they can provide to a group. Think about Roots, Fairy Fire so rogues can go back into stealth, Insect Swarm and Moonfire for dots, off healing and of course flag carrying. Matter of fact, being a balanced druid is so versatile that there's many ways to spec as one. There's balanced specs with Feral Charge, which is a great way to interrupt a caster. Balanced specs with Nature Swiftness for instant heals, instant roots, or if you want to get more clever, instant hibernate against other druids or hunter pets. And then there's even some specs which mainly focus on just throwing out dots and keeping your distance. So there's many ways to play a balanced druid. 
It all comes down to how you want to play a balanced druid and how well you can make it work. Like many other things regarding druids, it takes time and effort to master the spec. But once you do, you get to enjoy the tears of people when they get their asses kicked by a balanced druid. So let's move on to PvE, shall we? I've seen many people say that balanced druids are simply not viable in PvE and here's what I think. Don't listen to them. Again, I've seen other druids that manage to pull it off. I raided on Warsong myself with my druid and guess what? I did just fine. Here's the thing though. They are suboptimal DPS so you are gonna have to put in time and effort to make it work. I always raided with some basic mana potions and raid consumes even in the most entry level of pugs on Warsong. So going the extra mile to counter the fact that they go out of mana and lacks in DPS is crucial if you want to prove yourself as a balanced druid. Also, it is important to know that as a balanced druid you will be doing nothing else but spamming Starfire, as there are 8 debuff slots in the beginning of the game and using 2 of those for Moonfire and Insect Swarm isn't worth it. So yeah, the balance pack is a little boring considering you're using nothing but Starfire to do damage up until ZG comes out when they add more debuff slots. So let's talk about Feral now, starting with PvP. Feral in PvP works not too bad either, if you can master the spec you're rolling with. Yeah, I know, it's kind of a trend among druids. There's Deep Feral which goes all the way down to Leader of the Pack, but there are also hybrid specs, where one gets talents such as Omen of Clarity from the Balance Tree, Feral Charge from the Feral Tree, and Nature Swiftness from the Restoration Tree. Feral is not about staying in cat form and doing as much damage. It's about approaching every situation and every class in a different way. For instance, using bear form to soak up rogues and warriors damage, caster form to apply debuffs such as moonfire and insect swarm, bear form again to feral charge in order to interrupt the caster, and so on. Like all the other specs, there's much to learn about feral druids, but master them and you will be a worthy adversary in PvP. Now let's talk feral in PvE. Feral Druids actually have a place in raids. First of all, they're great off tanks and they're much better at getting a large health pool compared to warriors. There's fights where Feral Druids can shine because of this. Think about Broodlord Lashlayer in Blackwing Lair, where the tank has to soak the mortal strikes the boss does. A Druid is better at this because they have way more health than a warrior. Second of all, Feral DPS actually works in raids. Again, this might come as a surprise to some people, but it is viable. However, just like a balanced druid, you have to go the extra mile. You can't just gather a bunch of feral slash rogue gear, get into cat form and expect to be top DPS. We'll always be lacking behind an equivalent gear in melee, and in order to make feral DPS work you need to learn how to power shift and you'll need to get your hands on a wolf's head helm. This head gives you 20 extra energy when going into cat form and with 5 points in Fuhrer you'll get a total of 60 energy every time you shift out and into cat form. Getting that gear and getting power shifting under control is key here, but if you master it you will be able to do some pretty good DPS. Again, I'm not saying you'll beat a warrior or a rogue, but you will be able to pull your weight in raids and like the other specs, you always have that extra utility that makes druids so good like innervates and battle resses. And last but not least we have resto druids. Now in PvP resto druids reign supreme as flag carriers, being able to constantly get out of movement and pairing effects, having increased speed with travel form, they can sprint in cat form, soak up damage in bear form, hot themselves up with regrowth and rejuvenation, and when things get tricky they can throw out an instant heal with nature swiftness or swiftment. Not just as flag carriers though, like the other specs, Resto Druids are an excellent support class that can stay at the back of the group, hot everyone up, throw dots on enemy targets, and with their shapeshift they can fall back easily. Moving on to PvE. Restoration is what most people are going to roll with in raids and for a good reason. Out of all specs it's the easiest to get into raids. Cause balanced druids and feral druids really have to go the extra mile to prove themselves. But as a resto druid you have a much bigger chance of getting a spot in the raid. In terms of healing there's different ways to go. Starting with the most common way to heal which is using lower rank healing touch. That's right in vanilla you'll use lower ranks cause the mana to heal ratio is much better compared to max heals. You can, however, also heal with hots such as Rejuvenation, but this really only works if you're a geared druid. If you're still a new raider, stick with the lower rank healing touch. Also, you can roll with a kind of feral resto hybrid spec, 
meaning 5 points in Heart of the Wild for that extra 20% intellect, which is a huge buff, and then the remaining 21 points in the Resto Tree, all the way up to Nature Swiftness. You'll miss out on talents like Swift Mend and Improved Rejuvenation, but as I stated before, you're not going to use Rejuvenation until you get some hands on some good gear. Other than that, if you go Feral Resto, you miss 10% healing and a bit of threat, but if you feel like you're lacking in the mana department and the occasional mana pot isn't enough, then going Feral Resto is actually not a bad decision at all. Again, like all the other specs, the strength in Resto Druids is not just their healing. It's the extras they bring to the raid like Innervate and Battle Rest. Keep that in mind when you're rolling as a Resto Druid or matter of fact, any spec. Well there you have it folks, it might come as a surprise to you that Druids have way more possibilities than you would think and that's really a shame. These days people are more open minded to alternative specs, but the general consensus of people is still that the balanced druids and feral druids are useless and that they do little to no damage etc etc. Yes, a balanced druid is not going to beat a mage, and a feral druid isn't going to beat a rogue, and you should not go into these specs thinking you're going to top the damage charge, but go the extra mile, master your spec and your rotation and you will be a good addition to a dungeon group or a raid regardless of your spec. Oh, and I'll leave you with this. In this video, I talked about how I advise you to go balanced in a later stage of the game. And I said that Feral Druids are considered to be better at leveling, but if you honestly have way more fun leveling a balanced Druid, even though that's not the best way to go, then don't be disencouraged. At the end of the day, you should play with the spec that you think is most fun. Well, that's all for now for the Druid Guide. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll be back pretty soon with a new guide on a different class. But until then, I want to thank you for watching this video. I'm Hamster Real, and have a good one.